Management Studies IGNU presents an audio book on the course MMPC 002 Human Resource Management for MBA program. Presenting Block 1 Introduction to Human Resource Management Unit 1 Concept and Evolution of HRM Part 2 Learners, in Part 1, we discussed Introduction, What is HRM, Evolution of HRM and Objectives of HRM. In Part 2, we will discuss Importance of HR, Scope of HRM and Nature of HRM. Let's listen to Unit 2. Importance of HR As the central subsystem, HRM interacts closely and continuously with all other subsystems of an organization. The quality of people in all subsystems depends largely upon the policies, programs and practices of the HRM subsystem. The quality of human resources determines, in turn, the success of an organization. The importance of HRM can be discussed at four levels – corporate, professional, social and national. Significance for a corporate Human resource management can help an enterprise in achieving its goals more efficiently and effectively in the following ways. First attracting and retaining the required talent through effective human resources planning, recruitment, selection, placement, orientation, compensation and promotion policies. Second, developing the necessary skills and right attitudes among the employees through training, development, performance appraisal, etc. Third, securing willing cooperation of employees through motivation, participation, grievance handling, etc. Fourth, utilizing effectively the available human resources. Fifth, ensuring that the enterprise will have in future a team of competent and dedicated employees. Professional Significance Effective management of human resources helps to improve the quality of work life. It permits teamwork among employees by providing a healthy working environment. It contributes to professional growth in the following ways. First, providing maximum opportunities for personal development of each employee. Second, maintaining healthy relationships between individuals and different work groups. Third, allocating work properly. Social Significance Sound human resource management have a great significance for the society. It helps to enhance the dignity of labor in the following ways. First, providing suitable employment that provides social and psychological satisfaction to people. Second, maintaining a balance between the jobs available and the job seekers in terms of numbers, qualifications, needs and aptitudes. Third, eliminating waste of human resources through conservation of physical and mental health. National Significance Human resources and their management plays a vital role in the development of a nation. The effective exploitation and utilization of a nation's natural, physical and financial resources require an efficient and committed manpower. There are wide differences in development between countries with similar resources due to differences in the quality of their people. Countries are underdeveloped because their people are backward. The level of development in a country depends primarily on the skills, attitudes and values of its human resources. Effective management of human resources needs to speed up the process of economic growth which in turn leads to higher standards of living and fuller employment. Scope of HRM 
According to Daily Yoda, the scope of human resource management is very wide. It consists of the following functions. First, setting general and specific management policy for organizational relationships and establishing and maintaining a suitable organization for leadership and cooperation. Second, collective bargaining, contract negotiation, contract administration and grievance handling. Third, staffing the organization, finding, getting and holding prescribed types and number of workers. Fourth, aiding in the self-development of employees at all levels of providing opportunities for personal development and growth as well as for acquiring requisite skill and experience. Fifth, developing and maintaining motivation for workers by providing incentives. Sixth, reviewing and auditing manpower management in the organization. Seventh, industrial relations research, carrying out studies designed to explain employee behavior and thereby effecting improvement in manpower management. The Indian Institute of Personal Management has described the scope of human resource management into the following aspects. First, the labor or personal aspect. It is concerned with manpower planning, recruitment, selection, placement, induction, transfer, promotion, demotion, termination, training and development, layoff and entrenchment, wage and salary administration, incentives, productivity, etc. Second, the welfare aspect. This aspect is concerned with working conditions and amenities such as canteens, crutches, restrooms, lunch rooms, housing, transport, education, medical help, health and safety, washing facilities, recreation and cultural activities, etc. Third, the industrial relations aspect. This is concerned with the company's relations with the employees. It includes union management relations, joint consultation, negotiating, collective bargaining, grievance handling, disciplinary actions, settlement of industrial disputes, etc. All the above aspects are concerned with the human element in industry as distinct from the mechanical element. Nature of HRM Human resource management is a process of bringing people and organizations together so that the goals of each are met. It tries to secure the best from people by winning their wholehearted cooperation. In short, it may be defined as the art of procuring, developing and maintaining competent workforce to achieve the goals of an organization in an effective and efficient manner. It has the following features. First, pervasive force. HRM is pervasive in nature. It is present in all enterprises. It permeates all levels of management in an organization. Second, action oriented. HRM focuses attention on action rather than on record keeping, written procedures or rules. The problems of employees at work are solved through rational policies. Third, individually oriented. It tries to help employees develop their potential fully. It encourages them to give their best to the organization. It motivates employees through a systematic process of recruitment, selection, training and development coupled with fair wage policies. Fourth, people-oriented. HRM is all about people at work, both as individuals and groups. It tries to put people on assigned jobs in order to produce good results. The resultant gains are used to reward people and motivate them toward further improvements in productivity. Fifth, future-oriented. Effective HRM helps an organization meet its goal in the future by providing for competent and well-motivated employees. Sixth, development-oriented. 
HRM intends to develop the full potential of employees. The reward structure is tuned to the needs of employees. Training is offered to sharpen and improve their skills. Employees are rotated on various jobs so that they gain experience and exposure. Every attempt is made to use their talents fully in the service of organizational goals. 7th, integrating mechanism. HRM tries to build and maintain cordial relations between people working at various levels in the organization. In short, it tries to integrate human assets in the best possible manner in the service of an organization. 8. Comprehensive function HRM is, to some extent, concerned with any organizational decision which has an impact on the workforce or the potential workforce. The term workforce signifies people working at various levels, including workers, supervisors, middle and top managers, it is concerned with managing people at work. It covers all types of personnel. Personnel work may take different shapes and forms at each level in the organizational hierarchy, but the basic objective of achieving organizational effectiveness through effective and efficient utilization of human resources remains the same. Ninth, Auxiliary Service HR department exists to assist and advise the line or operating managers to do their personal work more effectively. HR manager is a specialist advisor. It is a staff function. Tenth, interdisciplinary function. HRM is a multidisciplinary activity, utilizing knowledge and inputs drawn from psychology, sociology, anthropology, economics, etc. To unravel the mystery surrounding human brain, managers needs to understand and appreciate the contributions of all such soft disciplines. 11th, Continuous Function HRM is not a one-shot deal. It cannot be practiced only one hour each day or one day a week. It requires a constant alertness and awareness of human relations and their importance in everyday operations. Components of HRM Following are the major components of HRM. Human Resource Organization Human Resource Organization is concerned with achieving success by organization, design and development, motivation, the application of effective leadership and the process of getting across the message about what the enterprise is setting out to do and how it proposes to do it. The fundamental objective of human resource organization is to ensure that every aspect of the organization, employment, motivation and management of people is integrated with the strategic objectives of the business and contribute to the successful achievement of those objectives. The Human Resource Organization program has to take account of cultural issues so that the desired corporate culture can be developed or reinforced. Moreover, Organizational development programs and interventions are needed to achieve better integration, provide teamwork, motivate human resource, develop proper leadership, facilitate communication system, manage conflict and change and obtain commitment. Human Resource Planning Human Resource Planning sets out to define how many people the organization wants the type of people the organization needs at present and in the future in terms of their expertise and how they fit the corporate culture. It involves the forecasting of both the supply and demand for future labor. It provides the base for recruitment programs and for human resource development plans. Human Resource Systems Human resource systems are the essential programs needed to recruit, appraise, pay and look after the health, safety 
and well-being of the employees in the organization the main key programs are first recruitment management it is a process of obtaining the required human resource for an organization second information management it is a method of ensuring that all policies and practices are to be well articulated and effectively communicated to the workforce third training management it is a system of identification of training needs preparation of a training strategy and an appropriate training system fourth performance management it is a technique of appraising performance systematically against defined criteria reviewing progress to date and assessing the potential for advancement there are three main appraisal systems such as performance appraisal potential appraisal and performance coaching or counseling fifth reward management it is a method to ensure that people are rewarded in accordance with their contribution sixth career management it is a system of charting special career paths for the individual employees for advancement in the organization seventh health and safety management it is a system of maintaining a healthy and safe system of work in an organization eighth discipline management it is a system of administering discipline to foster positive employee behavior that will promote organizational objectives ninth culture management it is a system of thinking and behaving shaped by the values attitudes rituals and sanctions in an organization human resource development rao 1985 defines hrd as a process by which the employees of an organization are helped in a continuous planned way to first acquire or sharpen capabilities required to perform various tasks and functions associated with their present or expected future roles second develop their general enabling capabilities as individuals so that they are able to discover and exploit their own inner potentials for their own and or organizational development purposes third develop an organizational culture where superior subordinate relationship team work and collaboration among different sub units are strong and contribute to the organizational health dynamism and pride of employees human resource relationships human resource relationships deal with the handling of employees individually and collectively as members of trade unions or staff associations their main aim is to increase cooperation and trust and to involve employees actively in the company's affairs it also deals with problem solving techniques particularly solve problems relating to disciplinary cases and grievances there are two sides to a dispute in most organizations the management and the workers there is a gap and the means have to be found to bridge that gap whether or not unions exist it is highly desirable for the management to develop methods of dealing with employees collectively nonetheless relationships with unions often involve confrontations the necessary techniques must be evolved for encouraging mutuality and working together in the interests of all unions have to be managed like everything else in an organization management normally gets the union it deserves if it handles unions the wrong way the results for the organization can be disastrous an approach to collective dealing should be first the recognition of the union second the respective role performance of the management and union third the type of procedures one can adopt to regularize relationships with unions fourth the basic techniques of negotiating with unions fifth the mechanism of involvement through participation both traditional forms of joint consultation 
as well as the Japanese import of quality circles. Human Resource Utilization According to Peters and Vetinan, to achieve productivity through people, it is very essential to treat them as adults, treat them as partners, treat them with dignity and treat them with respect. These fundamental human relations values provide the base for productivity management programs which use techniques such as method study to improve efficiency. Both managers and workers must be persuaded somehow to realize that they have a common interest in increasing output. The following actions are required to improve the use of human resources. First, conduct a productivity drive. Second, improve manpower budgeting and control techniques. Third, introduce work measurement. Fourth, use appropriate payment method, buy results, bonus and profit sharing schemes. Fifth, improve motivation. Sixth, involve employees in improvement programs. Seventh, introduce new technology. Eighth, negotiate appropriate productivity agreements. Ninth, introduce training programs based on an analysis of productivity needs. Human Resource Accounting or HRA HRA means accounting for people as the organizational resource. It is the measurement of the cost and value of people to organizations and involves measuring the costs incurred on recruiting, selecting, hiring, training and developing employees and judging their economic value to the organization. HRA can be very useful in managerial decision making. For instance, whether it is recruitment and selection or replacement of an employee, HRA can provide an estimate of the cost involved in the process. Similarly, it can help the management in budgeting for development of human resources. HRA can also provide data pertaining to turnover costs, the cost of employees' absence and its impact on performance of others. Human Resource Audit The purpose of a human resource audit is to assess the effectiveness of the human resource function and to ensure regulatory compliance. Human resource edit is a vast subject and covers many delicate aspects of human and organizational interactions. The HRD auditor has to study the organization design, its objectives, performance of its human resources, as well as the proper maintenance of HRD climate and practices. The job of the HR auditor is not an easy one. To gain success, he has to be very selective about the area and procedure he wishes to follow. Auditing in the field of human resources is a difficult job, more so because unlike other audits, the auditor has to deal with individuals vis-a-vis -vis organizational priorities. Therefore, the HR auditor is required to be very systematic in his job and define the task clearly as to which arena he has to cover. Summary The human resources of an organization represent one of its largest investment. The objectives of HRM include getting the organization right, providing effective motivation and leadership, obtaining and developing the right people, paying and treating them fairly and getting them involved in working productivity. The attainment of these objectives necessitates the performance of several functions. The main HRM systems are first, appraisal system, second, career system, third, training system, fourth, work system, fifth, cultural system, sixth, self-renewal system. All systems and subsystems of HRM must be incorporated in the organization while setting the goals and objectives. 
This will also integrate the purposes and processes and make HRM more meaningful. Human resources functions are many and varied and include such things as human resource planning, recruiting, selecting, training, counseling employees, compensation management, and employer employee relations. In small organizations, most human resource functions are performed by owners or operating managers. Large organizations usually have a human resource or personal department that is responsible for coordinating and directing the human resource functions. Successful human resource management is essential to organizational growth and success. In the light of new challenges, there are indications that human resource people will play an increasingly important role in an organization's long-range planning and policy-making activities. You are listening to audiobook by School of Management Studies, IGNO, for MBA program. Course code MMPC002, Human Resource Management, Unit 1, Part 2. Course Coordinator, Prof. Neeti Agrawal, from School of Management Studies, IGNO. Voice over by Santosh Bharti. Edited by Taranam Jaha. Program assisted by Jagbandhu Jana. And program produced by Manoj Kumar Singh. This program was brought to you by Electronic Media Production Center of Indira Gandhi National Open University.